So I just saw The Drover's Wife, The Legend of Molly Johnson, and it was absolutely incredible. So incredible that I decided that a film this brilliant and underrated needs to be talked about and realized that I needed to make a video on it. Since a lot of people probably haven't heard of this film, I'm going to try and give some context. If I was going to compare this to any one popular current film, it would be The Northman. They have some similarities in terms of being beautifully shot, brutal period pieces that tell a folktale relating to injustice and revenge, only I'd have to say I actually preferred The Drover's Wife. The visual aspect of The Northman was incredibly impressive and Edgar's obvious passion for the period really elevated the film, but I'd have to say that the narrative didn't work amazingly for me overall, and that the themes of The Drover's Wife were way more complex and well handled to me at least. In terms of Australian films, I'd have to say that another clear comparison would be 2017's Sweet Country, directed by Warwick Thornton, which is also an absolutely amazing film. They both capture the brutality of Australia's early colonial period, contrasted with the beauty of the environment, in ways that really resonated with me. To describe the experience of this film, it's basically a western set in the 1800s during a prominent period of Australia's colonialization. It tackles the racism, sexism, and domestic violence of that period pretty directly, but at no point does it ever feel preachy. It just tells a story and tries to convey the authentic perspectives of people at the time, and the commentary comes as a natural evolution of this. It really serves to elevate the film rather than bring it down. In case you didn't know, The Drover's Wife is actually a classic Australian short story by Henry Lawson, which I read when I was in high school studying Australian folk Law, and what I remember of the story was very different to the experience of the film. Apparently Lee Purcell wrote an award-winning play that was a revisionist take on this short story, and this film is an adaptation of that play. Purcell actually wrote and directed this film as well as starring in it. And apparently she's been in the entertainment industry for a long time, but I've never seen anything she's done but this film has convinced me that she's a talent to be reckoned with. This film is so precise, professional, and mature in every aspect of its presentation. Purcell conveys such a clear vision with her directing and writing, and overall the atmosphere just sucks you in. Purcell has directed a few smaller projects before, but this is her first major feature, and she knocked it out of the park with her creative work. But that's not where the praises end. If you're gonna cast yourself as an Australian folk hero, you'd better deliver. And I can safely say that not only did Lee Purcell deliver, but she gave my favorite performance of the year so far. I mean, I've only seen like four live action films this year, but still. She perfectly conveys the trauma and terror Molly has boiling under the surface with her masterfully understated work. Her steely glare speaks volumes, and the intensity of her performance only ramps up as the film does. It really is fantastic work. Every single other performance in the film was incredibly effective and appropriate as well. Molly has a 12 year old son who has a lot of screen time and it's the type of role that in a lesser film could be very distracting. But fortunately the kid's performance was surprisingly fantastic. He fully sold me on the character and every emotional beat he went through. I also really enjoyed the actor who played the indigenous outlaw who stays with Molly. Just like Purcell, the understated power he brought to the role really gripped me. I can sing the praises of basically every technical aspect of this film, so let's do that. The cinematography was fantastic. Just like Sweet Country, this film manages to fully capture the eerie beauty of the Australian outback, as the landscapes are absolutely stunning and perfectly capture the film's atmosphere. The camera movement and lighting of each scene was incredibly precise and well done as well. The film's score was absolutely incredible. I've never heard of you, Saliana Seven Campbell, but you are going places. Her score is commanding, visceral, and unrelenting, and kept me gripped throughout. The sound design was also incredibly effective and really helped draw me into the atmosphere. The film was consistently gripping throughout, but the ending was when the impact of it all really came full circle. If you can sit through the ending without a serious pit in your stomach, I'm convinced you don't have a soul. Just like Sweet Country, this film doesn't shy away from the brutal reality of how events like this played out and it's a really excellent culmination that hits you in all the right ways. It's genuinely kind of hard to talk about this movie without sounding repetitive because every element of it is so good. I feel like I've just been using the same adjectives over and over, but it really shows how much praise I have to give it. Overall, the maturity and dignity of this film was really striking to me, and I think that's something I've come to appreciate about Australian films in general. Streaming services and big studios pump out so much stuff nowadays, and there are so many films I've seen that are so inoffensive that you can just completely shut your brain off. But I can't think of a single Australian film I've seen where I haven't left genuinely compelled by what the film is exploring and trying to say. Samson and Delilah, Sweet Country, Kenny, and even the Barbadook seem unafraid to directly address societal issues and the effect that they have on individuals, and they all left a strong impact on me as a result. Maybe since the Australian film industry is so small and independent, creative voices like these end up with more of a chance than through some big studio system. 
It probably also has to do with what the Australian people want to see in general. We want to see characters and stories that authentically reflect our lives, even the uglier parts. I'm saying all this because I just think Australian films as a whole are very underrated. We have so many great compelling stories out there, and obviously I'd recommend all the films I've mentioned in this video. So yeah, The Drover's Wife was excellent and one of my favourite films of the year, and I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Sadly, by the time I got around to seeing this film, it was already going out of theatres, so I can't really properly recommend it to you guys. If there's a screening near you, then definitely check it out. There are a few around, so get in there and support this film while you can. Also, it's probably going to come out on streaming or at least VOD soon, so it'll be much more easily accessible. So that's promising. And that's about it for today's video. I really wanted to try and speed up the process of making these videos, and so this one was pretty quick. As you know, I've been saying that the next video I post is going to be the most important one I've done so far, and I've been making other videos in the time being, but I've decided that this video is the last one before I fully commit to that one. I want to get it out around the middle of July, so watch out for that. I'm going to be updating the discussion tab pretty regularly, so check that out. And also subscribe if you like my videos, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.